Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and I'm a photographer from way across the country in Tennessee who traveled to Oregon just so I could experience this view. This is Cannon Beach, famous for those big sea stacks. But why is it called Cannon Beach? On my way out of town and up the coast toward Astoria, I spotted this little roadside pull-off and decided to check it out. The big wooden sign commemorates a time in 1806 when William Clark of the Lewis and Clark Expedition made some trades for whale blubber and whale oil from the local Tillamook people. But this little monument is the one that tells the story of how Cannon Beach got its name. The placard says, Cannon Beach, named after the cannon washed ashore on this beach from the USS Sloop of War Shark which was wrecked while attempting to leave the Columbia River September 10, 1846. This replica erected by the Cannon Beach Commercial Club December 15, 1952. The town was originally called Elk Creek, but was renamed to Cannon Beach in 1922 at the urging of the post office because of confusion with another town name. The shark ran aground trying to leave the Columbia River to enter the Pacific Ocean at a place called the Columbia Bar. It's a bunch of sandbars and shoals at the mouth of the river, and it was so dangerous back in those days, it was called the Graveyard of the Pacific. About 2,000 ships have sunk around the mouth of the Columbia River since the 1700s, and more than 700 lives have been lost. That leads me to the subject of this video. We're driving a short distance up the coast to see one of those shipwrecks. Continue straight, then you will arrive at your destination. You have arrived. There it is, the last of the few remaining bones of the wreck of the Peter Iredale. The Peter Iredale was a four-masted steel sailing vessel that ran aground right here in October of 1906. No one was injured and 27 passengers were rescued from the ship. Two of those were stowaways. The ship had been pushed into the sand by strong winds. Plans were made to pull the ship out of the sand, but it took several weeks for favorable weather conditions and in the meantime, the ship had listed to one side and started becoming embedded in the sand. Will you just look at the mood of this place? How dramatic.
Ladies and gentlemen, that's the southern end of the Graveyard of the Pacific. The mouth of the Columbia River is not far up the coast there on the horizon. This ship was named after Liverpool-based businessman Peter Iredale. He owned a shipping fleet, which included this one. The ship was built in England in the 1890s. When the seas are calm and the tide is low, you can walk around and inside the skeleton of the ship. On my way back to Portland, I wanted to explore the hauntingly beautiful Oregon forests a little bit, and I also made one stop to shoot some abandoned buildings.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to see all my Oregon photographs at my website, keithdotson.com.